Hey, good evening. This is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous stepping into your life with a few moments of education, of hope, of help, and techniques that are going to help you going through divorce or life after divorce. And tonight we're going to talk about parenting after divorce and maybe even during divorce, depending on the uh, situation you find yourself in right now. If you're in the, the middle of this or you're just starting this process, you're not quite sure how to do this co-parenting. And although the courts give guidance and a uh, divorce coach can give guidance and your mediator can give guidance, it's a topic that's just messy. So I want to give you just four tips tonight to things for you to think about and to consider as you are going through this process. It's really difficult to have the mind shift that the rules have now changed and things are different. And it's very easy for us to fall back into the routine of where we've been. And that is relying on your spouse uh, to be the same type of parent. Well, things have changed. The rules have changed. And for us to get an understanding of that is really going to help us through this process. Because if we rely on everything to be the same as it was, we're going to be disappointed and we're going to be hurt. The, there is a, a, new, a new game plan and we have to find that and work that through mentally, emotionally, as well as legally. So there are new rules and we need that mindset change. And for some of us, we need the mindset change that even in parenting, this person who we once were intimate with and live with for many, many years is now an unsafe person. And I don't mean physically unsafe for the children, what I'm saying emotionally unsafe and for some of us. And so for us to get the truth of what the situation is, is really going to help us. The truth is always, always our friend. And uh, that's something you'll hear me say if I'm working with you at all. The truth is always our friend, even the hard truth. So that mindset change of, okay, I have to learn a new way to relate to this person and to relate in some ways, relate to my children. So new rules, uh, number two, what is your behavior showing your children? I was just speaking with someone who is, um, as she's bringing the kids back uh, to her husband, she's going into the house and getting them settled. And also when she picks them up, she'll go into the house and help them get ready. And I really admire that because that is trying to keep the routine with the children. I really admire that. But I also wonder if it's not giving the children false hope because that's not the reality anymore. And at what point, and I, I know this is a delicate balance, but at what point do we stop doing those things and help our children adjust to them as well? No, mom is not going to come in the house anymore. I will pick you up at the front door and I hope you're ready, but I'm not coming into the house. And I'm not coming into the house um, when I bring you home. And that is, man, that's difficult. And it's a delicate balance of how do I do this so that my kids aren't affected so deeply. Well, we don't want to give them the false hope. We do want to put in the boundaries in place that are so necessary for their heart and also for your heart. I'm a firm believer, and the scriptures are too, to guard your heart and to guard the children's hearts is to have the behavior and act like, yes, life has changed. It's a new, a new day a new routines, but my love for you has not changed. I'm always going to be your mom. I'm always going to be your dad. I'll always be here for you. But the reality is things have changed. Life has changed. 
So there again is that delicate balance. If you want to talk in, in great detail on this, I'd be happy to talk with you or bring it to a therapist, a child therapist, or your own therapist, just to talk out what is a healthy co-parenting look like? And that's a really good question because research has shown that our kids are going to make it through this if we can co-parent well. It's so important that we co-parent well. And what does that look like to co-parent well? Well, it looks like we treat each other cordially. We treat each other with respect. We realize that we're not going home with each other. But we also are on the same page when it comes to parenting. Because if you want to put confusion into your children's lives, then just have those different parenting objectives and rules. It's so confusing for the children. So how do you, as much as possible, yes, you're going to have some disagreements, but as much as possible to be on the same page, to be that consistent mutual force that is there for your kids. It really is going to help them. It really is going to help them not only get through the divorce, but to be healthy after the divorce. Point number four is what is your communication? How are you communicating with him or her? I hope at this point, if your divorce is completed, that you are communicating factually with them. Sometimes it requires an app. There is one called App Close that is a free app that helps parents communicate with each other. And there's something called Family Wizard which is a cost to it, but also an app that helps parents communicate with each other, has a schedule on there and allows you to, uh, to be that team, that parenting team for your children. But how you communicate with your former spouse is so vitally important. You are not going to use the children to communicate with the other parent. You're going to use either the app if you're having difficulty or a text or however. But please, please don't use your children as a messenger or to relay messages um, of changes in schedule or anything else. You have to be the adult here. Please don't put this on your precious children's shoulders. It's too much. So communicate with them. And if you're having a hard time communicating with him or her, then you do it. Stick with the facts. Stick with the facts. Don't get into emotional discussion. That's going to help minimize the conflict. It's going to help the children. It's going to help you. It's going to help your future. So uh, four points. There are new rules. Don't try to play by the old ones because things have changed. What is the behavior that you are showing your children? Is it helpful? Is it healthy? Or is it hurting your children? Uh, research shows that healthy kids can come out of a divorce situation if the parents are healthy and that they are co-parenting well. Uh, that means being cordial, being respectful, being on the same page as much as possible with the other parent. Yes, this requires communication, but that still can be limited communication. And that's going to be better for you, for your former spouse, and for the children couple great verses. Uh, I love the book of Proverbs, um, and I have some Psalms here too, um, that just teaches us. That's what they're for. They're the, it's a book of wisdom. It teaches us, a man of great wrath will pay the penalty. For if you deliver him, you will only have to do it again. So what that means, if you're going to save someone out of their wrath and anger, um, you're just going to repeatedly have to do that. So let them pay the penalty. It's boundaries is really what it is. Uh, remember that a soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Keep your responses soft. Keep them factual. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Remember to have grace. Stand strong, stand firm, stay with your point and your convictions and what you believe on parenting.
but you can do it with a soft answer and you can do it with grace and you can still stand strong with the boundaries. Boundaries in parenting and divorce is critically important. Your children are confused and they are traumatized by what they're going through. Don't add any more confusion. Keep them consistent as possible. Your life consistent, their life consistent as possible. Realizing there are changes that are happening. So to help your children through is to have those healthy boundaries between you and your former spouse in communication, in physicality, where you at, you're not going to jump in the car and go on a major trip with each other. You're just not, because it's not realistic for your children. So look at how you're handling this. And if you need help, get the help. Get the help that you need. Nobody does this perfectly, but those who are intentional and get the advice and help that they need, get through it much smoother and do less damage. And that is always my goal. And that is to minimize the damage that divorce creates. It's going to create the damage, but how do we minimize that? One way is having boundaries in our parenting and how we respond and co-parent with your former spouse. This is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous walking with you every step of the way through the trauma and after the trauma of divorce. Have a good evening.